Hartley, SG-1, Thursday at 8 on A. Tonight on A News at 5. I would like to announce today that the board has accepted the resignation of Paul Battersell effective immediately as a result of a loss of confidence in his leadership of the Victoria Police Department. This is A News at 6. Good evening. The search is on for a new chief of police for the Victoria Department. Paul Battersill has resigned. The embattled chief has been on leave since last October and was scheduled to appear at a disciplinary hearing this coming Monday. That hearing has now been cancelled. Battersill was placed on leave after A News began asking questions about freedom of information requests regarding his expenses. Victoria Mayor Alan Lowe, as you saw, who is chair of the police board, has accepted the resignation saying that the board has lost confidence in Battersill. But the mayor still will not say why the former chief was suspended in the first place or what the subsequent investigation has turned up. A News reporter Stephen Andrew has led our investigation into the Battersill matter and he joins us now with the latest. Stephen. Hudson, for the past nine and a half months, the Victoria Police Board has been discussing the future of its police chief, Paul Battersill. Well, today, he made his own decision. I would like to announce today that the board has accepted the resignation of Paul Battersill effective immediately as a result of a loss of confidence in his leadership of the Victoria Police Department. It is the end of a nine and a half month ordeal for Victoria Police and the end of Paul Battersill's career as the department's chief. It started on October 10th last year when A News first started asking questions about freedom of information requests seeking details on Paul Battersill's expenses. The chair of the Victoria Police Board called an emergency meeting that ran for several hours. When it was over, Paul Battersill was placed on administrative leave. Tonight, I am announcing that Police Chief Paul Battersill is on administrative leave effective immediately to enable the police board to review and respond to the issues that have been brought to our attention. But since that first announcement, Victoria Police Board Chair Alan Lowe has refused to say why the board removed Battersill. The only clue to the move? This is a letter to uh, Ian Blakey from uh, David Moroni. Is this the letter that you're discussing in your meeting today? Yes, it is. And what uh, about the concerns that were raised in that meeting? Uh, again, uh, that is a personnel issue that our board is dealing with right now, and that's why we cannot disclose what our board is looking at. In the days following, BC's Police Complaints Commissioner ordered an investigation, and the police board suspended Battersill with pay. Man. The final report on the investigation was given to Alan Lowe in April, who ordered a disciplinary from hearing for Monday, August 18th. Now that Battersill has resigned, the hearing has been cancelled. It is now up to the Office of the Police Complaint Commissioner to review the findings and determine if a public hearing is warranted. A public hearing could be held if his office believes that the issues are such that they are in the public interest. Other than to say Paul Battersill has not committed or was involved in any criminal acts or financial impropriety, Alan Lowe is remaining silent on why Battersill was investigated or suspended. You are responsible for the citizens of Victoria's tax dollars. Don't you think you have an obligation to explain to them uh, what has been going on here? Well, I think that uh, we as a police board have uh, acted very appropriately and uh, we are looking uh, uh, after the best interests of the taxpayers. Um, there are some things uh, within the within the last nine, nine and a half months that we are unable to disclose only due to the fact that um, we are bound by the settlement agreement at this time. But according to a Victoria businessman who is familiar with the investigation, Alan Lowe started his own investigation long before BC's police complaint commissioner got involved. And the businessman says he's not happy with how Alan Lowe is dealing with the Battersill issue. I know that Alan Lowe started the investigation and um, I think when you're dealing with public figures and public money, it should be open and transparent. Hartwig says that means more than releasing a two-page settlement agreement between Battersill and the police board, keeping details of the investigation secret and contributing $15,000 for Battersill's legal fees. But Hartwig does see something good in today's announcement. Hopefully that uh, this is now behind us and uh, the Victoria Police Department is one of the finest police departments in the country and hopefully the... Um, the police board and the council will give them the tools and manpower that they need to do the job that they're so capable of doing. The Victoria Police Board has commenced a nationwide search for a new chief. They expect the position to be filled by November.
Now, today's settlement agreement provides Paul Battisil with salary, vacation pay benefits, and any other benefits, Hudson, that he would have earned up and to, including today. And $15,000 as well for, for legal fees, Stephen? Yes, that uh, $15,000, they feel, is certainly, uh, uh, the police board feels is certainly appropriate and is paying for a part of his legal fees in fighting uh, or representing himself at the uh, disciplinary hearing as this process has gone through in the past uh, few months. But this thing may not be over yet. Uh, tell us more about that. This, this file could be put back to the B.C. Pl Complaints Commission? Well, it certainly has been sent back to the Plaints Com Complaints Commissioner. He could review that file. He can simply uh, either uh, release the reasons for the investigation. He could release uh, perhaps part of the investigation itself, or he may decide to do nothing, whatever he feels is in the public interest. I spoke with the office today. They said that that could take several days, and they also have to, Hudson, have to review the information that they received today. All right, we'll stay on the story. Main News reporter Stephen Andrews. Stephen, thanks. You're welcome. Well, just hours after the Victoria mayor made his announcement, Interim Police Chief Bill Naughton made his statement to the media to allay public fears about the impact that this ordeal and the investigation has had on the police department and its morale. Interim Chief Bill Naughton says though the process has been long and challenging, the focus has been on the continuity of operations of the Victoria Police Department and its work in ensuring public safety, and he says the department has done its job. Since October, the senior management group has successfully argued for the largest ever single increase in staff, sworn and civilian, to address our disproportionately high call load. It has increased the number of job applications for police officers by over 100% over last year. Developed the most comprehensive strategic plan in the history of our department, celebrated our 150th anniversary as an agency, and launched our own Con Air initiative. Naughton has not confirmed whether he intends to apply for the job of chief himself other than to say that the competition will close in September. Two members of the Canadian Navy now posted at CFB Esquimalt have been charged after a classified military computer was hacked into. Petty Officers 2nd Class Sylvia Reed and Janet Sinclair are charged with sabotage, conspiracy, mischief and willful property damage. They are accused of corrupting a government database a little more than a year ago during the time that they were posted in Ottawa. Reed was to have served on board HMCS Regina, Sinclair to serve at Maritime Forces Pacific Headquarters. CFB Esquimalt tells A News they have just arrived from Ottawa. Their, their employment uh, has yet to be determined. Well, gold and silver and bronze are three of the reasons why Canada's 300 Olympians are in Beijing in pursuit of the podium. But with the first week nearly over, Olympic glory is eluding us. Four years ago in Athens, Canadian athletes earned a dozen medals, and at least that many were predicted in these summer games. And news reporter Mary Beth Burton now with more on what is keeping us from taking home the hardware. Simon Whitfield is Beijing bound. I'm getting a little nervous now just because it's, uh, it's upon us. Whitfield's biggest, littlest fan, his 13-month-old daughter, gives him a good luck hug. And no pressure, but the nation is counting on Whitfield to bring Canada out of its metal drought. Uh, the swimmers are setting Canadian records left, right and center. Uh, they came fifth. That's a great, you know, they set Canadian record. I'm not sure what people expect. The closest Canadians have come to the podium is a fifth place finish for the men's 4x200 relay and fifth again for the three meter synchronized dive team. Whitfield is not predicting a medal for himself, but he does see the men's eight rowing team on the podium. They would have marched onto the plane without saying a word. They're just so focused, those guys. Um, and then Van Vancouver, uh, um, uh, Adam Vancouver, and he, he should knock one of the park too. It's too soon to panic, believes rower Silken Lauman. The triple medalist with the silver and two bronze says there's plenty of Olympic heavy metal out there for Canadians. Uh, is it a bit premature? Well, yes. I mean, we've still got a lot of great athletes still to compete. Yeah. Uh, but certainly, uh, you know, to see Canada win a medal is something that's exciting for all of us. A News sportscaster Jordan Cunningham, who watches the Olympics for both work and because he loves athletic competition, is feeling a little medal envy. I'm disappointed. I mean, when I look at, uh, at Olympic medal boards and countries like, and no disrespect to these countries, but Togo, Tajikistan, uh, Kyrgyzstan, I've never heard of these countries, and they've all got, uh, Azerbaijan has three more medals than we do so far. And while this is just a public swim at Saanich Commonwealth Place today, this is the facility where many Olympic hopefuls have trained. So why hasn't what's happened here at this pool translated into the podium in Beijing? I mean, medals cost money. That's just a fact, right? I mean, you need the world-class coaching, you need the world-class facilities. All of that costs money. Pacific Sports says the medals will come in about four years, thanks to recently announced federal funding. 
Summer Sport gets 18 million this year, 16 million next year, and 25 million a year in perpetuity after that. Oh, we get what we pay for, and we're not putting enough funding into athletes. I think they have a terrible time. I think it's it's really rough trying to be an athlete of, of that standing in this country. So I consider how much our government supplies these kids. I think we're doing great. Are you disappointed in Canada's performance? Well, no, because we I know that we try really hard and uh, we do our best. How Canadian, a? Eh? Is our national complacency keeping us from the podium? And that was always kind of the joke that bronze was the Canadian gold in the Summer Olympics. Uh, but we seem to have fallen a little farther than that these days, fifth or sixth. I mean, those days of just going to the games to participate are over for Canadians. They're going there to perform and to win medals for Canada. But when? Pacific Sport predicts Canada's first of up to 15 medals could come by this weekend. In Saanich, Mary Beth Burton, A News. We will be watching and keeping our fingers crossed. Well, we saw Bruce Williams with a uh, Shriners clown in our last hour of A News at the Shriners Golf Tournament at Olympic View. Let's see what's uh, going on now at the course. Bruce. Well, um, kind of more clowns. There's a bunch of them then, then and then at the end of it is another. I feel so underdressed when I'm in the presence of clowns. This is how the uh, Shriner clowns get around. If you take a look at the, it's a caboose. You see, you kind of you walk up on here. Never mind, I won't go in there. Uh, anyway, this is how these guys travel. This unit was put together by uh, the Shriners. See, this is the engine that pulls it right here for the uh, Giza clown unit for the Shriners. This unit right here, of course, is what it's all about. The Hospital for Children, the Shriners bus. This is the coach that we are raising money for here today at this golf tournament at beautiful Olympic View. I'm going to sit on the train just because I can. What a beautiful day for golf today. What a beautiful day for everything. Now. Again, no records today in the temperatures. It's pretty comfortable. We're pretty close to the Strait of Juan de Fuca here, uh, where it's been a little breezy today, so that's kept an edge off the heat. But boy, when you get out of the wind, it's been a pretty hot day. And we have some hot days on the way for later this week. It's going to get windy overnight tonight in most parts of Vancouver Island. It will be very windy tonight along the Strait of Juan de Fuca. But for tomorrow, it looks like this. The capital region, temperatures are going to start to increase a little bit tomorrow after we get through a little bit of morning cloud. But it's going to be a very, very nice sunny day. A little fog probably in the morning on the water. But after that, it's going to be lovely. Great weather this weekend for the Tellus Dragon Boat Festival. It's going on in town, too. You get up through uh, Duncan, Shimanus, Lady Smith as well, into Nanaimo, Nanus Bay, Parksville, Qualicum. Uh, a little windy overnight tonight, tomorrow. But sunshine and a windy day for tomorrow along the Strait of Georgia. Uh, Port Alberni will also have a little fog in the morning and some sunshine for the West Coast for tomorrow. Nice day going on there. Courtney Comox, Cumberland, as well as Campbell River, Black Creek, Union Bay, Royston, Sayward. Sunny day tomorrow. It will be windy, and that's not just on the water. It's going to be pretty windy for everywhere. North Island is going to be windy tomorrow, too, uh, with sunshine by afternoon. Uh, Vancouver, Burnaby, uh, Mission, Hope, up the Fraser Valley, everywhere. Some morning fog in the valley. Sunshine for the daytime for everybody. Now, across the country, um, the rest of B.C. is going to be mostly sunny. It's going to be sunny for Calgary and Edmonton when you get yourself over into Saskatchewan. Some morning rain, certainly in Regina, and then sunshine after that. In uh, Manitoba for tomorrow, it's going to be thunder showers in the afternoon. There's been a lot of thunder showers this year. That's kind of the, the weather story for large parts of Canada. Huge amounts of thunder showers have been happening. Uh, let's go to the eastern part of Canada, southern Ontario. Uh, sunny and warm for most parts, but thunder showers and rain. When you get over toward the Quebec border for Ottawa, for Hull, over into Montreal, might be a shower in Montreal by afternoon. And the Maritimes, sun and cloud together, Moncton, Fredericton, should be sunny. Rain in Edmonston and rain for most of Nova Scotia for tomorrow. Sunny and warm for Newfoundland, though. The seven-day forecast for us. Here's the deal. Tomorrow, temperature into the 30s. The same thing for Friday. Now, Saturday's going to be the warmest day of all because humidity will be a factor. Um, after that, we're going to have some rain roll through on Sunday. It's certainly 100% for the west coast and the north part of Vancouver Island. 30% chance of rain for everybody else on Sunday. Back to sunshine for Monday. Might be some rain Tuesday, but uh, Wednesday, rather. Um, small chance of some rain, but some sunshine around as well. So we are here at Olympic View Golf Course, right on sort of the boundary between Colwood and Machosan. We are here with the Shriners for their golf tournament. Again, this bus is what it's all about. We had a great time playing golf today with the folks that want a chance to do that by winning their place to play uh, from us at A-Channel. It's all about the Shriners with the Shriners. It's all about fun, but mostly it's all about the kids. And we'll be back with more on Vancouver Island Report. All right, Bruce, thank you. Much more to come as A News at 6 continues. When we return, a Williams Lake woman is identified as one of two Canadians killed by the Taliban in an ambush in Afghanistan on foreign aid workers.
Betraya, get over here. You can see Vega. Look at this showcase. We start with furniture for the living room. And for the bedroom, mattresses firm, soft, and in between. What about the dining room? Classic to contemporary. It's all here for total savings. And the gas? You won't be undersold? You're right! Yeah! <laughs> Come down and save. The steady flow of water through your home is something we all take for granted. But when something goes wrong, your entire daily routine goes out of sync. Call Swift Plumbing. With our licensed technicians and fully stocked trucks, we can handle any plumbing job. We've built our business on trust by giving the best service. And we'll even work Saturdays without extra charges. So whether it's a job that's small or a full house install, call Swift Plumbing and keep your routine in sync. I'm Michael Butterfield. At Butterfield Law, we understand how tough separation and divorce can be, especially for children. We're child-centered and we'll use our experience to help you. Don't hesitate. Call Butterfield Law today at 382-4529. A young driver's day begins in St. John's. By 10, Tom is working on his parallel parking. At noon, Carolyn is learning to avoid a head-on collision. In Toronto, Lee is learning YD emergency maneuvers. It's 3 p.m. and Jen is learning the S approach to make turning left at large intersections safer. And Jessie has just passed her final assessment. Join our 1 million YD trained students and prepare for the road ahead. Want an amazing transformation? Try an amazing makeup. CG Smoothers helps you direct moisture to smooth and improve skin's condition every time you use it. How amazing is that? CG Smoothers. Easy, breezy, beautiful. Cover girl. In central San Angelo this morning, a 26-year-old man was killed, three others injured in a high-speed car crash. San Angelo police received a flurry of 911 calls just before 3 o'clock this morning. Witnesses reported seeing a car traveling at high speed just before it crashed into an embankment at the corner of Willis Point Road and Wallace Drive. The vehicle flipped on impact. Inside the vehicle located were four occupants, uh, three males, one female. Um, it turns out uh, one of the females, the two males, were transported to hospital with minor to moderate injuries. One male uh, in his late 20s uh, was deceased at the scene here. That accident was, in fact, just inside the Saanich border near central Saanich. Two of the passengers were from Esquimalt, one from Saanich, all in their 20s. No names released tonight. The coroner and police are investigating. The police say a preliminary examination of the debris on the road and the evidence there suggests that speed was a factor. And a car driven by a senior left the road and crashed into a home in Oak Bay this morning. The compact drove over the lawn and came to a crashing halt on the ground level of the house. An ambulance arrived to take the driver to the hospital, suffering undetermined injuries. Nobody inside the house was hurt. The damage to the house was minor. On the Lower Mainland, some homeowners keeping a nervous eye on the woods near Abbotsford after a fire started in a logging debris pile and is now burning not far from their homes. The BC Forest Service says the one and a half hectare fire on Sumas Mountain started in a pile of logging slash. Five aerial tankers, bucket equipped helicopters and two dozen firefighters on the ground have been trying to gain the upper hand on the flames. By late this afternoon, the Forest Service said that the fire was under control. The fire is burning about a third of the way up the mountainside. There are homes only a few hundred meters away. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. And there has been another bear incident, another bear shooting on the mainland, this time in North Vancouver. Conservation officers put down the young female bear after it broke into a house looking for food. Officers say the bear was not afraid of humans and was considered a serious threat. It was just last week a woman in Coquitlam was attacked by a black bear while she was gardening. Another incident in the same general area in which a bear came inside a basement suite and began eating food it was found. That animal, too, was destroyed. Well, it was one of the deadliest attacks on foreign aid workers in Afghanistan in years. Four people ambushed and killed, and two of the victims are Canadian. The Taliban have claimed responsibility for the attack. Afghan police say five gunmen riddled the truck carrying the three workers 
outside Kabul. One of the Canadian dead is 30-year-old Shirley Case of Williams Lake. She was in the war-torn country working for a U.S.-based aid group called the International Rescue Committee and was managing education programs designed to meet the needs of children with disabilities. I want to first of all express my condolences to the uh, families of uh, these murdered humanitarian workers. Uh, this is obviously an outrage, a uh, terribly brutal act, which I think should remind everybody of the brutality of the Taliban and the dangers that uh, everybody there faces, not just military people, but all those who are there trying to help rebuild this country. The other Canadian killed has been identified as a 40-year-old woman from Quebec. Two Canadian soldiers belonging to the same regiment have come home for the final time. The bodies of Master Corporal Aaron Doyle and Master Corporal Josh Roberts arrived in coffins today at CFB Trenton. Both soldiers fought with the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. Doyle was killed by insurgents Monday at a small combat outpost. Roberts was killed on Saturday during a military operation. Canada's former top soldier is receiving a special honor. Retired General Rick Hillier has been named the recipient of the Conference of Defense Association's Vimy Award. The annual award recognizes an individual who has made an outstanding contribution to the defense and the security of Canada. The judges describe Hillier as an outstanding leader who has constantly reminded the public of the important role played by the Canadian forces. U.S. President George Bush says Russia must keep its word and must act to end the crisis in Georgia. Bush says he is concerned that Russia may be violating the truce that was brokered by the President of France. We expect Russia to meet its commitment to cease all military activities in Georgia. And we expect all Russian forces that entered Georgia in recent days to withdraw from that country. Bush's comments today come as the Georgian President claims there has been a large-scale movement of the Russian military in his country today. Russian tanks have been on the move. Russian tanks have been, uh, and Russian troops have been behaving extremely aggressively, and they've been in the process of basically completing ethnic cleansing of all uh, Georgian populated areas of South Ossetia and Abkhazia. Russia denies those claims of new aggression and diplomatic efforts to end the crisis have escalated. Part of the country has been ravaged by the six-day conflict. Lebanon and Syria have agreed to establish full diplomatic relations. That announcement came today as the president of the two countries met. The two countries have not had formal relations since gaining independence from France in the 1940s. Their relationship unraveled in 2005 when former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri was killed in a car bombing that many Lebanese blame Syria for. Syria has always denied its involvement. A Port Alberni senior is lucky to be alive after wrestling a shotgun from a pair of thieves. Today, his neighbors have banded together to rid their area of a suspected drug house. We'll have that story for you tonight on Vancouver Island Report. Who's going to be America's next top model? The drama you love is back with a new season on A. We're not playing football. One, two, three, hook. Glamour. You should wear nude underwear. Beautiful girls. She's so happy to be here. Miss Perky all the time. And. I'm just like, shut up. You know, like, shut up. Meow. Did you catch that? <laughs> it really is every woman for herself. You want to be on top? A new season of America's Next Top Model starts September 3rd on A. My clients are interested in this laptop. Not sales pressure, hidden agendas, hence my services here today. Uh, is this for school? I'm going to college. Hey, you don't have to answer that. Okay, so we're not on commission here. We're not going to pressure anyone, so you really don't need a lawyer. <laughs> Objection. We've decided we're going to represent ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> this week, get laptops starting at $3.99. Find the right one for you with the Intel PC Buying Guide. And why not let Geek Squad set it up? It's the right Best Buy. Closed captioning is brought to you by United Carpet, the total flooring solution. Visit any island location today. Victoria's making the switch to today's best music. 107.3 Cool FM, the new number one choice for today's best music. More music than any other Victoria radio station. 55-minute music sweeps throughout your workday. More music, more energy, more fun. More fun. Find out for yourself why Victoria is making the switch to today's best music. 107.3 Cool FM. Here's to the people who will do anything to avoid wasting paper towels. For you... 
There's Bounty Select a size. It's smaller than a regular bounty sheet, super absorbent on small spills. And on butterscotch scrubs like this, Bounty Select a size is stronger when wet than a full size sheet of this competitor's towel. If you want less waste, try the paper towel that's part of the Future Friendly program. Bounty Select a size, the future friendly, quicker picker upper. Vancouver Island Company that is renowned for its charitable work has stepped up once again. Coast Capital Savings has donated $10,000 to the Mustard Seed Food Bank. And as A News reporter Eric Thompson shows us, the Mustard Seed isn't the only group that's appealing for donations. Food banks are struggling to keep up with the demand. Supplying people in need with the basics, such as peanut butter and canned goods, is an ongoing challenge. Brent Palmer has been with the Mustard Seed Food Bank for more than 20 years. He says this summer has been one of the most difficult. Transportation to get food on Vancouver Island is just going absolutely through the roof because the escalated costs of BC ferries. Palmer says during the summer months when school lunch programs are not available, many parents rely on food banks to help feed their families. We are so proud to be able to present a check today for 10000 Coast Capital Savings has stepped up with a major donation and the company is challenging other businesses to do the same. The money is through our community funding program and we provide a lot of dollars to various nonprofit organizations in our local communities and we uh, put this together today because we felt this need was great and we hope by setting this example that we will encourage others to follow suit and be able to get many more donations to the mustard seed. Many of the people who rely on the mustard seed food bank are single parents. And they're not only looking for food to feed their families, at this time of year, they're also looking for school supplies and backpacks. The Victoria Single Parent Resource Centre has partnered with the Victoria School of Business and Technology and 98.5 The Ocean to collect backpacks and new school supplies. The program is called Tools for School. The school supplies kids have to go back with need to be fresh and clean and new. There's, there's a real self-esteem issue attached to that. And when the kids on day one get singled out because they've got school supplies that aren't up to scratch, it sets a precedent that they don't want to go with. You can make a donation to the Tools for School program on August 16th or 23rd at the Victoria School of Business and Technology on Vernon Avenue in Saanich between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. In Victoria, Eric Thompson, A News. Much more to come tonight on A News. Vancouver Island Report is next. I'm Gord Kerbis in the Comox Valley with a disturbing story of collection agency tactics. I meet a local couple who says an agency working on behalf of TELUS has threatened them because they wouldn't help collect money from their neighbor who actually had the debt with TELUS. Tonight at 6.30 on Vancouver Island Report. Save on Foods, an active part of Vancouver Island. We've been the title sponsor the last six years of this event. We were here in its infancy the first year when roughly, I think there was 27 teams this year, the sixth year, there's 78 a uh, record, so it's a great event. The funds raised, this event all stays in Nanaimo. All goes to uh, Nanaimo Hospital Foundation. We're helping Cowichan Senior Secondary celebrate their dry grad. It should be a real fun night. 300 kids all going to be here and having a very sober and fun time. The Avon Foods has been awesome. They've donated their time tonight to come and make hot dogs and hamburgers and drinks and everything for the kids. The draw is helping the college and senior secondary school have a great night for their kids, their graduating class. Save on Foods, an active part of Vancouver Island. For 25 years, they've been on the island. staff is 11 years. They'll set you up with a sight and sound experience you will never forget. And now, they're in Victoria. Hi. McKay's Home Theater Center. They really are that good. I'm a lean, lean coffee bean with loads of caffeine. I'm a serious coffee bean. Seriously. The I'm locally roasted, fairly traded, organic. So, as you can see, at Serious Coffee, we're very particular about the selection of our coffee beans. 
It's the era of serious coffee. Once you get serious, you'll never go back to a warehouse taste again. Want great coffee? Get serious. Did you know that dry, rough hair is damaged hair? Did you know that New Dove can repair it? New Dove Daily Moisture Therapy is different because it contains a unique moisturizing serum. It repairs damage, replenishing the moisture lost daily. Make your hair pass the smoothness test every morning. Try the unique moisturizing serum in the new Dove Daily Moisture Therapy System. Goodbye damage. Good morning, beautiful hair. Try disinfecting Mr. Clean Extra Power Wipes. They dispense easier and better than the leading disinfecting wipes. And they're 30% thicker. Mr. Clean Extra Power Wipes are strong to tackle everyday tough messes you never thought a wipe could. Like baked on splatters, grease, and tough grime. Disinfecting Mr. Clean Extra Power Wipes. Dispense like a tissue, yet are tough like a towel. Also available in regular wipes. This is Vancouver Island Report. Good evening. We begin tonight in Nanaimo with a new twist in the story of the Harmac Mill and its future. Another offer has been made to purchase the mothballed mill. Cable Bay Lands Incorporated, that's the same company proposing a golf community near Cedars, says it has signed a backup agreement with the receiver. And that deal is worth nearly $7 million more than the bid put together by employees and their supporters. A News reporter Jonathan Bartlett has the story. He's live in our Nanaimo newsroom with the latest on this developing story. Jonathan. Hudson, a lawyer with Cable Bay Lands Incorporated confirms tonight that the company made the $20 million backup offer as a defensive move against other parties waiting in the wings in case the workers deal falls through. Receiver Price Waterhouse Coopers announced the $20 million offer yesterday. The employee's offer of $13.2 million is only good until August 29th. Nanaimo Forest Products hopes to finance their deals or their deal with contributions of $25,000 from each worker. A spokesperson with the union representing mill workers says he's not worried about the Cable Bay's offer. You know, is pressure a bad thing? Well, I don't know. You know, it, it certainly puts us in a position we know that we have to do it and there is another offer out there. So we just have to make sure that we meet what we said we would do and get that mill started. You know, it's no different than you buy a house and you buy a house and, and your, your offer is accepted and somebody puts a backup offer. I mean, there's nothing you can do about that. If, if you don't complete, then I guess it goes to the next guy, but we intend to complete. The lawyer with a numbered company associated with Cable, Land, Cable Bay Lands says by making the backup offer, they can dissuade other less desirable industries from taking Harmac's place, keep the mill running, and obtain valuable land assets other than the mill site. We're certainly hopeful that Nanaimo Forest Products will indeed complete their, uh, their, their purchase as a going concern. Um, our interest in the property is simply uh, for its potential with uh, uh, adding some of the lands towards our development of the golf course and residential development known as Cable Bay. Um, we have no interest in running a pulp mill. <coughs> um, most of the assets we have no, uh, we have no real understanding of what they are or what the value of those would be, but uh, we'd certainly be looking to, uh, if that, in that unlikely event that the, the union or the group was unable to complete, we would be talking to them about how we could assist them in continuing to operate the mill. Lawyer Brian Sanini says that whoever was to take over the Harmac land as anything but a pulp mill could face an estimated 40 to 50 million dollar cleanup cost. 530 workers lost their jobs when Harmac Mill closed in May. As many as 210 of them are expected to return to their jobs should the mill reopen. Cable Bay Lands Incorporated is the same company proposing a golf and spa community near Cedar and had recently changed its plans to ask the city of Nanaimo to annex 97 acres for part of its project. Hudson. All right, we'll stay on the story. Jonathan Bartlett reporting. Jonathan, thanks. Thank you. A Comox Valley couple is concerned about the way they say a collection agency is doing business on behalf of TELUS. They claim they were verbally threatened by the agency's representative when they refused to help with a debt collection against their neighbor. Now, the neighbor apparently owes the phone company money, and the couple says that they were told they had to help collect it. Now they want an apology. TELUS says it's reviewing the situation and says although this kind of thing won't happen again, it needs its bills paid. A News reporter Gord Kerbis has the story. Uh, of course, I phoned them back and asked for apologies from everybody. And of course, no contact now. Now they cease phoning.
A Comox Valley man is today still upset with a phone call he says his wife received last week from a collection agency. The agency, it turns out, was apparently looking for their next door neighbor over a debt with TELUS. But Jason Barnes says the agency appeared to be looking for their assistance. My wife, of course, told him that she wouldn't have anything to do with it and uh, don't call here again. And he said, then he threatened her and said, well, we're going to phone your landlord and you won't like what happens then. But Jason and his wife, Carrie, don't have a landlord. They own the duplex they're living in and claim the collection agency, in this case, CBV Collection Services, appeared to be looking for them for help in collecting the TELUS debt. And basically threat, not can you. Didn't ask nice or anything else. It was a threat. You will go tell your neighbor or we will call your landlord. Today, a representative from TELUS disputes that version and says they'd never share collection information with neighbours. Sean Hall says the Barnes household would have been called because they share the same address as the person with the debt and there are strict guidelines for how their collectors operate. We have it in our contracts with them that they will engage in only the most professional and above board practices. And we only refer customers to collection agencies after several months of trying to collect debts. But Barnes believes the same situation has happened before. We have a really close, close friend who, uh, in the, in, here in the Comox Valley, who had the exact same thing happen. They phoned her and asked, I guess a neighbor had moved out and jumped on a bill, and they wanted her to go across the road and ask the new tenants if they knew where the old tenants had moved to. Jason's wife, Carrie, didn't want to speak on camera, but afterwards she did tell me that her neighbor was very upset to find out that private financial information about her was being shared with neighbors. Now, as for Jason, who's both a residential and a business customer of Telesis, he said he was most annoyed when he phoned the company to complain that he was told by a Telus representative that it wasn't their concern, even though Telus was the company that contracted the collection agency in the first place. Barnes is waiting for an apology from TELUS or the collection agency about what happened. TELUS is looking into it. Well, we're certainly going to be reviewing uh, this incident with the collection agency, uh, speaking to them about what happened and their overall practices, making sure that those continue to be appropriate. In the Comox Valley, Gord Kerbis, A News. The people who are opposed to a liquefied natural gas plant proposed for Texada Island have talked the Capital Regional District around their way of thinking. They have been working for the past year to try to quash a Vancouver company's plan to import that liquefied gas on tankers. Vessels that would sail past several communities in the Mid-Island region en route to the facility at the north end of the largest of the Gulf Islands. But will the CRD's support sink those plans? A News reporter Shachi Curl has the story. For the better part of a year, Chuck Childress has led a campaign to keep tankers carrying liquefied natural gas from sailing through the Strait of Georgia. He's lobbied the province. He's lobbied local government. Today, he took his case to the Capital Regional District. The emissions from uh, greenhouse gases from LNG is about 20 to 40 percent higher than domestic natural gas. His greatest concern, Vancouver firm Westpac LNG's proposal for a $2 billion project, one that would see tankers sail up the Strait of Georgia past several communities in the CRD delivering liquefied natural gas to a terminal that would be built on Texada Island. Opponents say the project increases the potential for massive fires, explosions, even terrorism. If it were to have an accident, it could be a cat catastrophic event. A pool fire 300 and some meters in diameter that would cause second degree burns 1.6 kilometers from the fire. There is significant grounds to conclude that a high risk exists for catastrophic damage from the types of attacks terrorists are capable of mounting. That is a far cry from the information Westpac has provided to CRD directors. The company says bringing liquefied natural gas to BC means the province won't have to import energy. And it says its product poses no risk. It is a very safe fuel with an unparalleled safety record, Westpac wrote in a statement. Even if a spill were to occur on water, there would be no environmental effect as the LNG would simply warm up and vaporize. All those in favor of the motion? But in the end, CRD board members voted to endorse a proposed ban on LNG tanker traffic in the Malaspina Strait, the Strait of Georgia, Harrow Strait, and Boundary Passage. If a cruise ship, for example, was to have a collision with one of those, you could have a disaster that would be larger in its human consequence than 9-11. And if we can avoid that, we certainly want to. 
But the CRD resolution has no practical impact for now. The proposed ban will go to the Union of BC Municipalities this fall. Westpac says its plans are going full steam ahead. In Victoria, Shachi Curl, A News. No one from Westpac LNG was available to comment on the story this afternoon. However, the company does say a Westpac power plant would have less than half the emissions of a coal-fired plant. The company is expecting to submit a formal proposal for Texada to the province next spring. All right, let's take you back now to the Olympic View Golf Course, uh, where the Shriners Golf Tournament's underway, and Bruce is there. Uh, Bruce, uh, more clowns? I thought maybe I'd give you a break from the clowns this time, and I will... I'll, I'll play the part of the clown. Do you want to see something cool, though? The, ooh, this is a huge barbecue. This is uh, going to belong to somebody for tonight. This is uh, part of the live auction that I'm going to be conducting as the MC tonight here at this event, where we are raising money for the work of the Shriners. More particularly, that coach right there is the big vehicle that transport kids and families to care at the Shriners Hospital in Portland. So it's a great effort we're doing today, and we're having lots of fun. We're having lots of sun. I can't think of another word that, word that rhymes with that right now, so I will just move into some pictures. This is Island Proud, which we do with our friends from Save On Foods every night. These pictures, of course, are some of people here, little doggies here. Dave and Debbie keep them happy and healthy. Kaya and Little Bear from Duncan. Dave and Debbie are proud to be their caretakers. They're proud of them because they bring so much joy into their life. Best friends, next one here, Parksville Beach, bag of chips, what more would you want? These are the feelings from Joanne Heap from Victoria. These are her daughters, they're, uh, the ones on the outside there, Kelsey and Courtney, and their best friend, Carly. They're all great girls. They say it's for just one of those summers, lots of fun on the beach with your friends. And Valerie Harvey sent this last one in from Nanaimo. Six-year-old Ella Harvey loves to swim underwater. Isn't that a great shot? Uh, that's at the Nanaimo River right by her house. The photo was taken by her dad, Garfield, sent in by Grandma, who is Valerie Harvey, and Grandma says that Ella's a wonderful little girl and they could not be more proud of her. Send us your pictures. It's islandproud at atv.ca. We'd love to see them. We show them every night. We'd love to show yours. So get them off to us, and we will share those images with everybody who watches us here on The Big Show. So we are playing golf today. We're at Olympic View. We're raising money for, as you know, the Shriners and the bus, and that's what it's all about here today. Now, <clears throat> the weather has been spectacular for today. We haven't set any records, as we said earlier, no highs, no lows. We're gonna get really warm toward the end of the week, though Friday and especially will be, will be uh, a very humid day. A little change on Saturday with a possibility of some rain. Back to sunshine by Sunday, I'll tell you that in the seven day forecast, but let's show you tomorrow. It's gonna look like this, it's gonna be lovely. The capital region, South Island, Cowichan, all a very sunny day for tomorrow. A little fog in the morning. And not a lot of wind. Uh, Strait of Juan de Fuca is going to be windy tonight and uh, a little more for tomorrow. But once you move your way up the island as we move up to Nanaimo, Nanus, Parksville, Qualicum, VIX is on this weekend in Nanaimo, by the way. It will be windy tomorrow. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be a lovely day. It really will. Port Alberni will also be a sunny day and hot, but no wind there. The West Coast will also be a nice day for tomorrow. Temperatures always cooler on the West Coast. But if we move on up now to Courtney Comox, Cumberland, uh, Union Bay, Campbell River, Black Creek, sunshine tomorrow, windy, especially near the water along the uh, Strait of Georgia for tomorrow. But sunshine is the deal. It's going to be windy tonight. Don't forget that. North Island, Orca Fest in uh, Port McNeil this weekend. Sunshine by afternoon, kind of a cloudy start with some fog first thing in the morning. Uh, the lower mainland in the Fraser Valley tomorrow, Mission, Chilliwack, Abbotsford, some fog possible in the morning. Nothing but sunshine for Burnaby and Vancouver, though. And the rest of the province looks pretty good for tomorrow. There's going to be sunshine everywhere across the country. There's lots of sunshine. Uh, the rain that's going to happen will be Manitoba, Winnipeg looking at that. Um, probably a shower in Montreal, Ottawa, Hull, places like that. Uh, a little bit of shower activity in New Brunswick, certainly rainy in Nova Scotia for tomorrow. Now, the rain for us on the seven-day forecast, if you look at it Tuesday, we have a chance of it, but Sunday looks to be the best chance right now. Um, a very good chance of rain happening North Island and West Coast, but about a 30% chance for everybody else. Saturday will be a hot, humid day. Friday, uh, Friday and Thursday will actually be very nice, sunny days, too. Kind of like today was. So we hope you enjoyed today. We will be back and take one more look at the weather forecast for you. We're here at Olympic View Golf Course. This is the Shriners Golf Tournament. We're raising some money for kids and the work of the Shriners. And I'll see you back here one more time. Indeed we will, Bruce. Thank you. Still ahead tonight on Vancouver Island Report, a Port Alberni neighborhood bands together to clean up the area. The neighbors want something done about what they call a problem property after a 78-year-old man fends off a home invasion.
People in a neighborhood in Port Alberni are banding together tonight to rid their area of what they claim is a notorious drug den. They want something done about the problem property after a 78-year-old man fended off a home invasion. As A News first showed you last night, the Port Alberni senior wrestled a shotgun away from a pair of burglars, and today his neighbors are banding together to help. A News reporter David Wuchar spoke with them today. The people who live in this 5th Avenue neighborhood say they're tired of feeling like hostages in their own homes and are standing up against drug crimes in their backyards. We're being held hostage by the bad guys, and the good guys can't do nothing about it. I'm petrified to have my kids outside because of what's next door. Um, I'm a prisoner in my own home. I can't, we can't even sell the place because of what's going on here. We can't get out. We're, we're prisoners. Neighbors say the source of local crime is this home, which they believe to be a drug house. Yes, I woke up about uh, 2.30, 3 in the morning, went to the washroom, saw somebody on my couch in the dark. For a second, I thought it was my wife. Sometimes she has a bit of insomnia. And I looked again, and it wasn't my wife. So that's when uh, I just dialed uh, the police, told them the situation, and just waited. Other than the house you see behind me, which I have been told by the police is, uh, as a matter of record, a crack house, uh, it's a wonderful neighborhood. On Sunday morning, 78-year-old Stan Robinson awoke to find a pair of thieves had broken in and discovered a shotgun in his dresser drawer. He wrestled the licensed and unloaded gun away from them, but police fear frustrations are causing people to take matters into their own hands. Oh, yes, it's very disconcerting to, uh, uh, to a local police force, no matter whether it's the RCMP or, or any other police force for that matter. Clearly, uh, uh, the laws are quite intolerant of firearms being used for, uh, or uh, the intent of owning firearms is for the use of home defense. It's important that, uh, that uh, neighbours band together and work with their police to try to resolve these issues. Substance abuse is a problem in every island city, but people who live near drug houses in Port Alberni hope a new nuisance property bylaw being proposed will help clean up their neighbourhoods. These programs in other municipalities like the city of Nanaimo have been very effective to deal with chronic nuisances and uh, we intend on it um, being duplicated here in the city of Port Alberni. By putting neighborhood, police, and political pressures on drug dens, people hope those who operate and frequent such places will soon realize Alberni isn't a good place to do business. In Port Alberni, David Wilchar, A News. Two people were hurt in a single vehicle crash on Highway 4 just west of Sutton Pass early today. The wreck tied up traffic for more than an hour this morning. Port Alberni RCMP say there were two women heading to Tofino when their car left the highway, then went down an embankment and burst into flames. A Colson logging crew was working in the area and was able to extinguish the fire. One of the victims suffered serious injuries and was airlifted to West Coast General Hospital in the Colson helicopter. Dodge Neon mid-90s uh, off the road to the right-hand side near Sutton's Pass here. Uh, and we were fortunate enough to have a crew of loggers come out with a helicopter, a Colson helicopter and help with uh, getting the two injured uh, up out of the embankment. The second woman suffered minor injuries and was taken to the hospital by ambulance on the ground. And police are investigating the accident. They believe that speed may have been a factor. Comox Valley RCMP are asking for your help tonight. They're looking for the person or people who are responsible for a hydro line fire on the Strathcona Parkway. Witnesses reported hearing gunshots and then noticed the regulators on fire. Police say five rifle and shotgun casings were found nearby. Shotgun shells repairs are expected to cost more than $100,000 and will take several days to complete. Anyone who has information on the case is asked to contact Comox Valley RCMP at 250-338-1321 or make an anonymous call to Crime Stoppers. The BC Golf Association is hoping to drive more young girls to take up the sport and become golfers. Today, the association hosted a special golf clinic at the Nanaimo Golf Club for girls aged 6 to 17 years old. The goal is to get more girls interested in golf at an early age. The association set up a number of exercises to improve the girls' putting and swinging skills. Mostly it's about fun, but we're looking to bring girls into the game. We um, identified a need to uh, introduce girls to the game in a supportive, fun environment that they can... Um, learn with other girls the same age and uh, hopefully pick up the game. There's just so many opportunities for people to get good scholarships and there's just not enough girls in the sport. I don't know if it's because uh, they don't think it's cool or something, but it's just a lot of fun and if they can get into it, then they're going to love it. Well, I did it last year and I thought it was really fun and my Nana signed me up again with my cousin. So you having lots of fun? Yeah. What sort of things are you learning? Um, 
well, how to do proper back swings and how to do better putting. Today's golf clinic in Nanaimo was the biggest of its kind in B.C. The B.C. Golf Association hopes to host more girls-only golf clinics at courses up and down Vancouver Island. More sports still to come. Jordan's next on Vancouver Island Report. Walter Gretzky back on the island for his annual golf tournament, and he brought some friends. An island NHL star back on home soil. We'll tell you who it is next. Whatever happened with the explosion, it's flipped a switch. Where can you run? She knows everything. Where can you hide? Bank accounts, contingency plans, weapons dash. Where can you turn? Who we been, who will be? When your only defense. She's stronger and faster. Becomes your deadliest foe. We have to kill her, John. I know! Terminator, the Sarah Connor Chronicles returns for a new season, September 8th on A. Preservatives. Misty Lemon lets you refresh the world around you. Girls don't play football. You good at this. Yeah! On August 22nd. Receiver number one, Beyonce. And my favorite, Kyra Banks. She might be my niece after all. To do what no girl has done before. She's a quarterback. It's a boys league. <laughs> He'll teach her to work hard. You got a little dirt in your skirt? Stand tall. You gotta concentrate on your footwork. <laughs> and aim high. <laughs> Got a little dirt in your skirt? Ice Cube, the long shot in theaters August 22nd. Okay. I'm ready. It's the Hot Deals event at Trail Appliances. Over 500 models on sale. Save on Whirlpool. Incredible sale pricing on all Whirlpool appliances. And we pay the GST on select models. Whirlpool, just imagine. Plus, receive up to an additional $100 Power Smart rebate on select Energy Star models. The Hot Deals event until Sunday at Trail Appliances. Are you ready? It's not about the destination, but your discoveries along the way. Now, the experience comes to life with the new Downy Radiance Collection. With an embrace, scent pearls release the delicate fragrance. What's the secret to life in Nanaimo? We do things the island way. The daily grind is more like the daily unwind. We believe the best classrooms are outdoors. Shopping is more about catching up than keeping up. We love making a big splash. And bath time has never been so fun. Explore and play the island way in Nanaimo. Unlock the secrets to island life at secretnanaimo.com. I'm Michael Butterfield. At Butterfield Law, we understand how tough separation and divorce can be, especially for children. We're child-centered and we'll use our experience to help you. Don't hesitate. Call Butterfield Law today at 382-4529. All right, time for sports and uh, time for some big names. And Jordan's here with that. Jordy. Yeah, it's going to be a fun couple days, Hudson. Thank you. Walter Gretzky's annual golf tournament is set to tee off tomorrow at Bear Mountain, and it's attracted some top island talent, and we're not talking golf. You never know who might uh, who you might run into at Mr. Gretzky's tournament, and lo and behold, Port McNeil's favorite son, Willie Mitchell, was on hand just a short time ago at Bear Mountain Arena. Now, the tournament is a huge fundraiser for the Canadian National Institute for the Blind, and Willie couldn't be happier to be on board. Yeah, uh, this is my first year being a part of it, and uh, Matt Penninger here, uh, being from Victoria, asked me if I'd... Uh, come over and uh, he told me a little bit about the event and uh, me being an island guy it was kind of a chance to uh, get back to the island and uh, seeing the other people that were involved with the event and uh, their passion for it just brought me over and uh, anytime you can come out and have a good time and uh, raise some money for CNIB it's uh, well worth it so that's why I'm here. Two guys, one, two. 
Two Victoria basketball players are sowing the seeds of sport on Vancouver Island. Jordan Brown and Greg Wallace have put their collective passions into passion sport. Now this summer, they've dotted the island with basketball camps, teaching the finer points to the eager young masses. And you've got to be eager to enjoy this. Welcome to Defense Wednesday at St. Mike's Gym. Wallace and Brown have been putting 45 young ballers through the paces this week as part of their elite camp. Now, players from as far away as Campbell River have made the trek to learn from the former Camosun Chargers. What do you guys think of this defense drill? It's hard and tiring, but it's fun. Really? Yeah, same thing he said. It's hard really? and tiring, but fun. What's fun about that? It just improves your skills, and it, there's a competition in it, so. It's nice to finish with the elite camp because it comes with a lot of energy. And then looking at next year, how we're going to expand, we're hoping to get to Nanaimo, Port Alberni, and uh, Kelowna possibly, and continue to just really ramp up the program and raise the level of basketball in Vancouver Island and hopefully in British Columbia. Putting them to task out there. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to hear more from Willie tonight, uh, as well as Walter Gretzky, the man himself, tonight on eSports at 11. Great event. Wish yeah. them luck. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Uh, one more time, speaking of golf, uh, let's check in with Bruce for a last look at your forecast. Bruce. Uh, thank you. Clowns usually wear the... I'm just wearing my golf shoes. I don't have my big clown shoes on. There's lots of clowns with their big golf shoes and their big clown shoes on today. Uh, the Shriners, of course, all they do is for kids. They raise lots of money and they do wonderful things. And we're here raising money for the work of the Shriners today at Olympic View Golf Course. Had a great time playing golf. Had a great time in the weather. Here's what the next seven days look like for us. Um, the chance of rain on Saturday right now, it's about 30% south and mid-island, and then once you get to the North Island, it's pretty much a lock that there's going to be some rain on Saturday. The West Coast should see some too, and the humidity is going to build as well over the next couple of days. So that's what's going on. Lots of sunshine, beautiful weather. Congratulations to the Shriners for all that they do and all they've done here today to raise money for the kids and the families that need it. Thanks to them for their hospitality and to the folks here at Olympic View as well, and we will see you again tomorrow. Indeed we will. Uh, not me, though, Bruce. Thank you. That's tonight's edition of Vancouver Island Report. Eric Thompson and Mary Beth Burton will be here for me for the next few nights. Cheryl Bloxham's here for you tonight with A News at 11. Have a good night. This program is available with descriptive video.